Hello everyone. In this video we're going to look at the process of importing and characterizing a character inside a motion builder. So you have a 3D character. Um, you want to get it so that it's working with the motion capture inside of um, motion builder. Uh, the first thing you need to do is characterize that character. That's done through this human IK panel where we get this blue button of the Vitruvian man here. Um, and here's where you can like create an actor, control rig, and so forth. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So if I go to File, and then um, let's go to File and then Open. And I'm going to open up this test model that I have here. And I've got a couple of things shut off, I believe. But you could turn on and off different things on import. So say I didn't want the model. I can check off these and it won't bring those in. If I don't want things like lights, I don't have to bring in the lights and so forth. And for this one you can see I've got the characterization shut off so that it doesn't bring in the characterization. So I want to show you that process. Um, if there's any particular namespaces you need to change, you can also do that on import as well. And as you can see, this is a model from Mixamo. So, um, you, you know, you can uncheck or check whatever parts of um, the import that you want to bring in. So, um, I've got a character here. And as you can see, if I select on the list of characters, it just says none. There's no characterization here whatsoever. And when you're working with a character in uh, for motion capture inside a motion builder, typically you're going to want to make sure that they're in a 90 degree T pose. Uh, 45 degree M poses can cause there to be some sort of offset in the animation. Uh, so my suggestion is to al always uh, force your character into a T pose. It's just going to make things a lot simpler, especially with the workflow using our motion ca capture system in house. Um, it just makes it so that the animations will be one to one. All right, so uh, you can see we've got the mesh in. We can start to see the joints here, but we can't really see them too well. So if you go over here to display, there's a couple of different things that you could do. Um, if you want to change the viewer layout to like two panes or four panes, like a traditional three modeling software, you can. I'm just going to use the single pane for now. And uh, you can also change between your different views from this view, drop down, this perspective, orthographic. Schematic view is where you can actually see how everything is linked up. Go back to producer perspective here. That'll bring us back to our perspective view. And uh, you can also switch between different cameras in the scene with the control I. Um, display, this is really important. So if I want to be able to see my um, bones, you can hit control A and that'll cycle through all these different options. So if I hit control A, there's just the model, there's the bones, and then there's the model with the bones inside of it. Okay, so we're going to want the view where we can see x-ray inside of here, and you can also switch through these just by clicking them here. You can show and hide objects from here as well. Uh, model display, so say I don't want to um, see my uh, models, I can uncheck that and just see the skeleton. Okay. All right, so I'm um, going to go back to model display and bring back my um, my uh, models. And um, if we take a look here, down in the navigator when we imported our um, character, it added in our scene, our models from our scene here. So you can see there's the body, um, eyelashes, eyes, shoes, all the different components that make up the character. And then there's also the rig, okay? So typically what you're going to want to do is um, this particular rig has all of the naming conventions um, installed on it, but we're going to want to create a skeleton here. And you can see all of the options are nested. And uh, Motion Builder's got some really handy features where you can right click and select all the branches, and it'll select all the branches of whatever it is you have selected. So I could select it from here and then select branches, and it'll select all the branches that are children of this parent. Okay, so um, it's really important. Um, feature because we're going to be using that a lot here. Now um, in this part we're going to take a look at defining a skeleton. So to define a skeleton um, in the human IK panel here um, we're going to want to take these bones and create a skeleton that's going to give us the character definition that we need to be able to retarget animation. So if I go over here to skeleton it's going to ask me, a valid skeleton is required, do you want to define one? And we're going to click on define. 
and you can see here that it brings up this diagram of a basic character rig and we can go in and apply all of these joints now if you have the same nav uh, naming conventions that Motion Builder uses here and you can see it brings up this character definition window that's hips, left up leg, left leg, left foot, right up leg and luckily for us the Mixamo model has this proper naming convention for those reasons because it's made to be able to interact directly with um, Motion Builder but um, if you rig your own characters with these um, naming conventions you can just do a one-to-one -one edit here but if you don't you're gonna have to manually individually select each bone and apply it here inside this window so I'm gonna show you that workflow real quick and then what we'll do is um, I'll assign some of these bones and we'll just do the drag and drop option so if I wanted to do this and I couldn't just drag and drop it into here and auto filled all of these properties in the character definition window, you see this character settings, the character definition. Um, what you'd have to do is select the joint and then right click the joint that you want to assign it to here in this panel. So here is see where it says here assign selected bone. Whatever bone selected, it's going to assign to that joint. And then I would go in here to the spine, go to the next spine in the joint chain and assign that one. And you can see here I don't have any more spine joints, right? But there's another spine joint inside of our character. So I'll select that spine joint. I can get back to bones here. So I'm going to hide the uh, model display for now. So I'm going to make it a little bit easier here. So you see I got this other spine joint here and I don't have a place to fill it. There are these little arrows that are like collapsible areas. And if I select them, you want to select the lowest joint in the chain and then assign that selected bone there. And you would continue to do this. And if your model is completely symmetrical, like if I select this arm here and assign that bone here, if it's perfectly symmetrical, it'll automatically select the other side. Okay? So you would go through and do that for the entire model, which I'm not going to do here because I know this will work with the drag and drop feature because it's named properly. Um, but you know, don't worry if it's not named properly. You can go in here and assign these bones manually, and you can also add them if you have extra ones um, by clicking on these little arrows. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unassign um, all of them by clearing all. Let me do clear all, and I'll unassign all of the joints. And uh, to assign these at just one drop, um, I'm going to right click on the um, root joint here and go to select branch and it should select all the branches. Now sometimes with your rig you're going to get a reference joint. You're going to want to drop the reference joint in this top option. But in this particular model it starts at the hips so I'm going to drop it into the hips. So I'll drop this into hips and you can see that it fills out each of these. And if you look here inside of the character definition window all the joints are filled out and you've got a green check mark here which means that this um, character is in a full 90 degree pose which is means there's going to be no offsets in the animation when we start retargeting them from our motion capture to the character. Now you might get a yellow triangle that's perfectly fine. Um, it'll still work with your motion capture it's just it might be offset slightly. Um, if you have a red stop sign you won't be able to characterize the rig at all and that means that there's a joint that is has some sort of rotation or translation on it that's off whack and it's not symmetrical and you need to go back and fix your rig um, to be able to correct that. Uh, but anyway that's pretty much the ins and outs of setting up the characterization for the skeleton. So now that we've dropped all of these joints in here we need to characterize this thing. So to finish off the characterizing process you just check off this checkbox that says characterize here. It says characters must be in stance pose facing the positive z-axis which it is and uh, it's saying either biped, quadruped, or cancel so we're going to do biped. Okay and we've got our biped character created and if we look we can go back to the definition controls in the tab here and there's that. So now we've got the character created um, what I can do now is inside of my navigator panel rename this character so it's more easily identifiable. So I'm going to go back to display here first and show our models again. And uh, down here where it says characters I'll open up this rollout and there's our first character we created. And I'm just going to rename her by right clicking on here. 
and going to rename and I'm going to call it girl girl model How about that girl model alright so now girl model will show up here in the characterization now when you're doing this process uh, with your models I highly suggest you would save at this point because now you have this thing characterized as a skeleton now you don't have to go back and redo this every time um, you want to assign new motion capture you could always start use this as a starting point as opposed to doing the whole characterization process again so I'm just going to go to file and then save and um, actually I want to want to save as and uh, do a test model I'll do girl model and there we go and I'll just save it out okay so now we got saved out as girl model all right, now that uh, we've got this out, uh, character saved out, in the next video, um, we're going to look at importing our motion file data.